Hi, everybody. Welcome to this event, the hunt of the origin of cosmic rays from La Palma that is jointly organized by MAGIC and CTO. Today is the International Cosmic Day, so what a great day to talk about cosmic rays and how we can study them through the observation of gamma rays. We're going to talk in this event about the scientific part, but we are also going to talk about two projects that are trying to disentangle this mystery, this origin of the cosmic rays. From one side, we are going to talk about magic, which is the current generation of telescopes for the ground based gamma ray astronomy. And for all the time, we're going to talk about CTO, the next generation, and what will be the first ground based gamma ray observatory. And even though MAGIC and CTO are different projects, are separated at La Palma, we are very close by, we are neighbors, and so we can do a joint live connection. After some presentations, we are going to connect with Lina Max, that are there at La Palma, and they are going to show us the two magic telescopes and also the LST-1, which is the CTO's large size telescope prototype. So before starting with the presentations, just uh, to tell you, if you have any questions or comments, you can put them already at any time of the event in our social media, in both CTO and magic Facebook and YouTube channels. At the end, we are going to gather them and we will try to answer all your questions. So without any further, I would like to invite Dominic, who is going to provide an introduction of MAGIC. Yes, hello Alba, hello everyone. A pleasure to be here with you today and to talk about this long lasting mystery that we are trying to disentangle on the Canary Island of La Palma. And as you have already heard, uh, one of the projects we are operating there and have been operating now for nearly two decades is MAGIC. So as often, I mean, MAGIC is of course an acronym, but it's also telling. So it's in the world what those telescopes do. They are the major atmospheric gamma ray imaging Cherenkov telescopes. Now that's a lot of words in one short acronym. Major, of course, those are huge telescopes. You see in the backdrop already one of those telescopes um, they have a 17 meter diameter mirror, so they are basically larger than a typical house. And then atmospheric gamma ray imaging, Cherenkov. So that's basically what is happening here. The way we detect high energy gamma rays at the surface of the Earth, it's an indirect way. That is necessary because of the, in principle, of course, very good circumstance that the atmosphere of the Earth is is not transparent to gamma rays. So in a way, the atmosphere of the Earth, of course, it protects us from this flux of high energy particles from the universe. And that's basically, that's good for life on Earth, of course, but it's a bit of an obstacle for astrophysicists trying to study those particles from the surface of the Earth. And now what can we do about this? Either we can put our telescopes onto satellites and do our observations from space, or we can become very creative and use this effect of the absorption of gamma rays uh, to make ground-based observations possible by an indirect way. And this way you can see in principle here. Now to the right on this slide, there is the telescopes. Those are not precisely the magic telescopes because there exist several um, Cherenkov telescopes, of course, on Earth. But uh, there's a system of two telescopes, not unlike the one we operate on La Palma. And you see from the top left, the gamma ray particles, so the photon entering the atmosphere of the Earth. And what does it do? It produces a cascade of charged particles, electrons, those particles that make up the, the um, that, that together with the nuclei make up the ordinary atoms, what, what matter consists of. So it produces a lot of electrons um, that move through the atmosphere of the Earth. And now those particles, they are so fast that in principle, they have to pay a speeding bill. Yeah, they are faster than the speed of light in the atmosphere, which is always slower than the speed of light in the vacuum. Being faster than the speed of light in the vacuum is not possible, we know since Einstein. But being faster than the speed of light in material like, uh, like air is possible, but comes with a speeding bill. And this speeding bill, it's paid in the form of a short flash of blue light. And this flash of blue light is called Cherenkov pulse. This can be detected by those large telescopes on the surface of the Earth and using fast cameras. And that's the basic principle how we can detect very high energy uh, gamma rays and other particles from the surface of the Earth, from the Rocca de los Muchachos on La Palma. 
You can see an image of one of those Cherenkov flashes in a typical camera to the lower left. So what you see is basically just a very, very short 10 nanoseconds or 10 billionths of a second long flash. And this is what carries the information we so crave. Now, how do, do, do those telescopes really look that we operate? You see another picture here. The system of two telescopes, they work stereoscopically. So they both look at the same air showers from two slightly different directions. And they consist, of course, of those large mirrors, so 17 meter diameter mirror. You can see them reflecting the starlight in these images here. And you can see on those long booms in front of the mirrors, of course, you can see the cameras. Those cameras, they have to be very fast because they have to de detect those nanosecond long flashes of light. And they have, of course, to be very sensitive because there's not a lot of light that is produced by these air showers. And now the information that is recorded by the cameras, it goes uh, to this building you see in the lower left, our counting house control building that we actually share with uh, CTA LST-1. So this is the next generation of Cherenkov telescopes on the Canary Island of La Palma and is recorded there and then sent for further processing to the participating physicists uh, that come actually from uh, more than a dozen countries, basically all over the world. You can see on this map of the world here, you can see the location of the magic telescopes on the Canary Island of La Palma. And you can see in blue the countries where we have major participation of physicists from. And this collaboration, it's composed of in total about 300 members, physicists, technicians, administrative staff, and many others, also students, of course, that participate in this decade-long and very, very fundamental and fascinating quests for the origin of the cosmic rays. Now, what those telescopes can actually do and what is what is especially exciting also in the context of the, of the mystery we try to unravel is that the lightweight structure of those telescopes, and if you remember this uh, carbon fiber structure that you have seen carrying the mirror and the cameras, you will shortly recognize it again in very great similarity when you look at the LST-1 telescope. It enables a very rapid movement of those telescopes over the sky. So we are able to catch short events, rapidly evolving events. And of course, those might hold some clues to the origin of those mysterious cosmic rays. Among those events, what we have been successful in catching over the last years are fast brightness changes from the centers of distant galaxies. Those centers that often host supermassive black holes, so black holes with masses millions or billions of times larger than of our sun. And when matter gets accreted onto this black hole, so matter falls into the gravitational potential of these black holes, we sometimes get dramatic increase in brightness of these objects. And then we can spot those, we call them AGN flares. So AGN for active galactic nucleus, an active center of a galaxy. And when it flares up in brightness, we can quickly catch that. We have been successful in tracing cataclysmic cosmic, cosmic explosions, which happen at the end of the life of very massive stars and which we call gamma ray bursts. And we also have been able to detect eruptions of binary stars much closer inside our own Milky Way in the form of no so-called novae. So that's a short overview over the magic telescopes and some of our recent science highlights. And with that, I'll hand over um, again back to Alba for an explanation of the next generation of Cherenkov telescopes on the Canary Island of La Palma and elsewhere in the world. Thanks a lot, Dominic. So I'm going to share now my slides. I hope you can see them. So just very briefly, I'm going to make an introduction about CTO that stands for Cherenkov Telescope Array Observatory. And I would like to start answering this question. What is CTO? So I mentioned at the very beginning that CTO will be the first ground-based gamma ray observatory and the world's largest and most sensitive detector for gamma rays. We're going to have a two telescope sites, one on the northern hemisphere, one in the southern hemisphere. I will talk about them a bit more in detail in just a couple of slides. But CTO has also other facilities. We have the headquarters at Bologna in Italy, also some offices in Heidelberg, and the Center for Management for the Data Management in Soiten nearby uh, Berlin. 
Right now, CTO is in charge of the, the design and implementation of the observatory once the new legal entity, so-called ERIC, is uh, in place next year. We are going to be responsible for the construction and operation of the, of the observatory. And CTO actually works in close cooperation with the so-called CTA consortium, a group of scientists all over the world. As you can see here, we have groups in, in five uh, different continents. And CTO and CTA consortium work together in the definition of instrument designs and the scientific program. So here we have the two telescope sites for CTO, as I said. One in the northern hemisphere in La Palma and the Canary Island in Spain, and one in the southern hemisphere in the Atacama Desert in Chile. So these uh, two, two sites, actually, it's the first time we have a ground-based uh, gamma ray facility with two sites. So we are going to be able to cover the entire sky. And they are going to be focused on different science topics. For example, in the northern, we are going to focus more on extragalactic physics, so observing sources that are beyond our galaxy, while in the south, we are going to focus more on the galactic physics, so those sources that are within the Milky Way. But since today we are going to have a live connection with La Palma, let me just uh, tell you some more details about the CTO Northern Array. It is located in the existing uh, Roque de los Muchachos Observatory in La Palma, where Max and Lina uh, are. And in the first construction uh, phase, the so-called alpha configuration, we are going to have 13 telescopes. You have here a rendering. This is not exactly uh, the picture or a rendering for the alpha configuration, but you can have an idea about the telescopes that we are going to have. For example, you can see that we have different uh, types of telescopes. I'm going to talk about this now. And here also in this rendering, you can see the magic telescope. Here, I don't know if you can see my, my mouse, but you can see the back of the magic telescope here. Magic are not part of... Uh, of the CTAO uh, site and, and array. Uh, but as you can see, we always say we are neighbors because we are extremely uh, together in, in La Palma. So uh, actually, as I mentioned, we are going to need different types of telescopes. And this is because CTO is going to cover an unprecedented energy range. We're going to catch gamma rays from 20 giga electron volts up to 300 tera electron volts. This is a lot of energy just to give you an idea of how energetic the light of, of this, uh, how energetic the light we are going to observe is. Um, the light we have in the offices or at home has an energy of about one electron volt. So we are talking about billions and trillions uh, more energetic light. And to cover this broad energy range, as I said, we need different types of telescope. I'm not going into details because I don't have a lot of time. But here you have the, the small size telescope. These are going to be only on the south in, in Chile. And they are responsible actually for the highest age, uh, the highest energy age. So they are going to be responsible for observing this 300 uh, TV. Then we have the medium sized telescope and finally the large size telescope. These are actually in charge of the lowest uh, energies, even though it doesn't look like, like that. And we actually have already one large size telescope. We have a prototype of this LST, the so-called LST one that is located at La Palma. And this is the one that we are going to, to see today with Lina and, and Max. Uh, this telescope, the LST one, is under commissioning. Once this commissioning phase is finished, it will be accepted by CTO and will become the first telescope of CTO. And why we want to build this uh, observatory? Well, we see with uh, Dominic, there are already current uh, generations working like MAGIC, also the facilities like HES and Veritas, and they've been working a lot for the past years. They've been doing great science. But this field, the gamma ray, the ground-based gamma ray astronomy, it's extremely young, it's barely 32 years old. So there is a lot of scientific and technology potential ahead of us. And that is where CTO enters. As I said, it will be the first round based gamma ray observatory, it will be the largest and most sensitive instrument to detect gamma rays. We're going to push also the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, observing up to 300 TV. 
And with that performance, we're going to get a completely new window, new view of the sky. Also, we have two sites for the first time, so we are going to get access to the entire uh, sky. And based on the knowledge from the predecessors like Magic, we're going to build state-of-the-art technology and software, and we expect to detect up to 1,000 uh, new objects. And also, very important, the data and the software tools for CTO, they are going to be available worldwide, so anybody are going to be able to, um, to analyze the data and do science. And just to finish, I'm not going to talk a lot about the science because I don't have time, but I would like to share with you the three main topics, the three main scientific cases for CTEO. Here you can see the extreme environment. So we're studying neutral star, black holes, also uh, studying beyond the standard models, the physics frontiers. Now, for example, trying to disentangle the nature of dark matter. But I would like to highlight the first topic because it's very related with uh, today's International Cosmic Day. One of the main topics, scientific topics for CTO is understanding this uh, cosmic particle acceleration. Understanding where these cosmic rays come from, how they can be accelerated up to almost the speed of light, how they propagate in the universe and how this propagation affects actually the environment. Um, I finish here. If you want more information about CTO, don't forget to visit our website and also follow us on, on social media. We are always putting there uh, more information. And with that, I finish. And I actually would like to, to ask David to join me here. He will be talking about the cosmic rays, actually. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Alba. Um, so I've been given the unenviable task to talk about a uh, hundred plus year mystery in physics and a hundred plus year of physics results. Um, so I am just going to very briefly go over cosmic rays and how we can study them, gamma rays and such instruments like uh, LT, CTA and magic. So cosmic rays were first, you know, we had known about uh, physicists had known about uh, a lower level amount of radiation, just, you know, urban Earth uh, since the 1890s, since, you know, very early uh, days of physics. They used a uh, device called an electrostatoscope. Um, most physicists had assumed for a long time that this radiation came from Earth um, in the form of radioactive elements that you know, had been discovered by Marie Curie around that time. And then came along a physicist named uh, Victor Hess, uh, who had a different idea that uh, this radiation actually came from outer space up above. So he had an idea. So he got into a hot air balloon and went up very high altitudes, about five kilometers above Earth, um, with one of these legoscopes to measure the amount of radiation as he went up. Now, five kilometers is nothing to sneeze at. Um, it gets as cold as negative 20 degrees Celsius. So just imagine doing this around 1912 in the Tweed Blazer, going up five kilometers in a uh, hot air balloon with a little device. Uh, these were pretty bright people. Um, and what he discovered was that the amount of radiation as you go up higher in altitude increases. So he proved his hypothesis, he did some basic science and proved his hypothesis that this radiation is actually coming from above, from outer space. And he called these terms cosmic rays. Um, and for this, he won the Nobel Prize in 1936 and invented an entirely new field of cosmic ray physics. So the question that we kind of want to answer um, as physicists is, what are these cosmic rays? And we've learned a lot over the past 100 years. Um, we learned that cosmic rays are mostly protons, about 89% of them, with some helium atoms uh, thrown in. Um, about 1% are electrons, and 1% are actually every other element. Um, that includes things like carbon, um, uh, calcium, iron, um, all the way up to, um, I forget exactly what the heaviest element is, but they go very heavy, well past iron. Uh, we also know um, that the abundance, the amount of materials that we see in these cosmic rays 
um, is very similar to what we see uh, in our own solar system. So this implies that at least some of these cosmic rays are coming from inside, of, inside our own galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, we also know that cosmic rays cover an immense range of energy. Um, as all was said, we use this unit called an electron volt, uh, which in itself is a very small unit of energy. Um, cosmic rays go all the way from, you know, a few GeV, uh, uh, tens of GeV, that's 10 to the 10 EV, all the way up to 10 to the 20 EV, that's 10 quintillion electron volts. These are the ultra high energy cosmic rays. To put quintillion, uh, put 10 quintillion, because that's just, uh, I'm sorry, 100 quintillion uh, in a number, um, that makes sense. That's the equivalent of kicking a uh, football at 50 kilometers per hour. Remember to also put this in some sort of context that the largest uh, particle accelerator on Earth, the, the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, Switzerland, only makes uh, pro accelerates protons up to 10 to the 12, uh, 7 times 10 to the 12 EV. So only a fraction of what we see in cosmic rays. Um, but for all that we've learned, we still don't know quite a lot about cosmic rays. In fact, one of the biggest mysteries of cosmic rays is where they come from. Um, we do not think that these cosmic rays come from a single object, like say one star or one black hole within our galaxy, that they come from a type of objects, a class of objects. Um, one of the main issues and problems with cosmic rays is that they um, have an innate charge to them. And charged particles when they interact with magnetic fields like this like this image here um, of magnetic field the magnetic fields measure of our own Milky Way galaxy they deflect and as you can see here in this in this video when you put a magnet up to a, a beam of electrons it bends so these cosmic rays as they're flying through the galaxy are hitting these magnetic fields and bouncing every which way. And since they have a, the galaxy is full of magnetic fields of different directions, and strength is everything, uh, these cosmic rays are bouncing around the galaxy like a pinball machine, like a pinball in a pinball machine. Um, but fortunately, we have one such uh, device that allows us to really know where cosmic rays are coming from with those gamma rays. Uh, this is why we do the science that we, we, we do. So gamma rays, which are just, as Alba and uh, Dominique said, are just light. They're just very high energy light, but light doesn't have an innate charge like say a proton or electron does. So the gamma ray is, 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 can travel straight through the galaxy and point us back towards where the cosmic rays. And we also know uh, through lots of science, um, that when cosmic rays interact with matter, such as interstellar gas around, or even uh, visible light through uh, processes that have fun names as inverse Compton scattering or uh, pi zero protection, that they will create very high energy gamma rays. Um, and that the gamma rays will only have a fraction of the energy uh, that the original cosmic ray did. Um, and these gamma rays are perfect for such uh, telescopes as are as Magic, Hess, and Veritas. These 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 very high energy telescopes, and for these future observatories like CTA. So gamma rays, you know, will night will travel in a straight line as you can see here in this animation, um, while the cosmic rays will bounce around. So we can use gamma rays as a tracer for where we. Uh, think that cosmic rays are being accelerated to try and figure out where the cosmic rays are coming from. So we have a lot of candidates uh, and ideas for where cosmic rays are coming from. Um, one of the strongest candidates we have are what are called supernova remnants. These are leftover gas and dust uh, accelerate very quickly uh, from the deaths of massive stars. 
um, from either hundreds or thousands or even uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, millions of years ago. Um, we have some nice, uh, pretty images here. Uh, one such example is Cassiopeia A on the left. Um, and these explosions create shock waves that expand into the, um, in, into the um, interstellar medium, the dust and the gas. Um, and these travel, and the shock waves travel hundreds of kilometers per second, which creates an ideal location to produce uh, cosmic rays. And we know that um, from observations from, um, from, pre from telescopes, uh, like uh, MAGIC and Hess and Veritas and soon to be CTA, that gamma rays, um, that these supernova remnants can produce gamma rays, um, and that these gamma rays are coming from the production and acceleration of cosmic rays. Um, unfortunately, the answer still is not 100% clear because we also know uh, from studying these sources that they don't produce high enough energy cosmic rays, um, that the cosmic rays only go up to um, a couple, um, a couple TeV or a couple tens of TeV. Um, that's ten to the twelve um, EV in energy. Um, so, and also that most supernova remnants only create uh, cosmic electrons. So we're still missing 89 percent of cosmic rays. Uh, the origin of eighty nine percent of cosmic rays. We also know that um, supernova remnants can leave behind fast rotating neutron stars, which we call pulsars, um, which have extreme environments, crazy high magnetic fields. Um, and that these proton, uh, pulsars can create huge outflows of cosmic ray electrons. And such a classic example that we often use in our field is uh, the Crab Nebula. Um, we, but once again, these are only creating cosmic ray electrons. So we'll still have a mystery within our galaxy of, of where the cosmic ray protons are coming from, where they're being accelerated. Um, another such source, source that was uh, mentioned earlier by Dominic and uh, Alba are active galactic nuclei. Um, um, these are cores, dense cores of, of, of galaxies, um, millions and uh, even billions of light years away. Um, and we think that these are the origin of these cosmic rays that come from outside our galaxy. There's the cosmic rays from inside and outside our galaxy. Um, and we know that these, these cores are very bright in gamma rays. Um, we, we have, you know, we see uh, tens and, 20 and dozens of these, of these, of these uh, active galactic nuclei in the gamma ray sky. And they're key science target for the, um, for the um, um, CTA North uh, Observatory. Um, they can create large jets which spew out material and matter, as you can see in this animation, um, and could create cosmic rays up to the highest energies of Earth. But then again, we still don't see the key signatures that we're looking for um, to create uh, cosmic ray protons. We think that most of these create, uh, are very easily to accelerate cosmic ray electrons. So we're still missing a lot. Um, so missing the origin of these cosmic ray, uh, the majority of cosmic rays, these protons that we're trying to find. But that's where CTA can come in and help. Um, and the current generation of IEC, um, of the very high energy gamma ray telescopes, um, because these will have unprecedented sensitivity as Alba just showed uh, towards observing um, gamma ray sources and the unprecedented sensitivity and ability to detect gamma rays will, will solve this, this hundred plus year mystery that we're, that, that we're all working on. Thank you. Okay, I'll Thanks a lot, David. Apple. Yep. Yes, thanks a lot for this super nice context on, on cosmic rays. Uh, I think that after having a look to, to the project, to the telescopes and the science in presentation, it would be time to watch them live from La Palma. So I would like to invite Lina and Max. Hi, Lina. Uh, we cannot hear you. Wait now maybe can you hear us 
Are yes, I can you? hear you, but we cannot hear Lina. Maybe you are muted, Lina. Oh, I'm sorry, the classic problem. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So okay. I leave you guys to, to show us uh, the LSC one and the magic telescopes. Yeah, okay, so Max is uh, showing us uh, around a bit and he's at this moment uh, inside uh, inside the area of the LST telescope, um, Alba already uh, told us about. We see here on the right, this is the camera tower. Uh, and you see this bow from the, from the telescope. There's, um, yeah, the camera located and, um, yeah, the camera is at this moment uh, safely parked on top of this camera tower. Uh, yeah, and there we have the, um, the mirrors of the telescope. So we have a a very large um, area of mirrors, it's like 400 uh, square uh, meters. Um, and this mirror has to be, yeah, like, like bent a bit in a parabolic shape. And you can't do this um, in, in one piece. So you can't do a mirror in, in this size uh, in, in one piece. So uh, what we do usually is um, that we uh, use this, uh, a, lot of, a lot of smaller mirrors and arrange them in this parabolic shape. And we see here, uh, I think it's 198 uh, mirrors we have here um, in a hexagonal shape. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, Max is uh, standing directly in front um, of the large size telescope. So as Alba already told, this is the prototype for the, um, uh, yeah, for the LST telescopes, large size telescopes uh, for CTA. Uh, and Max is showing us now um, the, the rails uh, where it's the, the telescope, um, yeah, where the telescope can 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 rotate. Uh, and we see here that uh, all these rails are covered uh, with uh, plastic um, yeah, plants. Um, this is because you um, maybe maybe have heard of it. Uh, we had a, a volcano eruption uh, here uh, on La Palma. Um, which is uh, still ongoing, I think, like uh, 50, 50 or 60 days now. Um, and the ash is raining down on the observatory. So if the wind uh, blows all the ash from this volcano, volcano to our observatory, the ash is raining down and covers nearly everything here. So every bush, every stone, and of course, all telescopes are uh, covered in ash. And um, yeah, we have to protect um, especially um, those, those rails um, with uh, these plants. Uh, so that there's not that much ash um, coming down on the telescopes. Um, at this point, maybe I can say, uh, so the, the problems we have here uh, in the observatory are quite little compared um, to the, the problems the people have living close to the volcano. So all our thoughts are with them. And uh, yeah, we are really um, yeah, try to supporting them wherever we can. Okay, so now back, uh, Max is showing us the LST tower again, where the, the camera uh, is resting, so this white thing up there. And then we see here the, the containers um, where um, yeah, and the operator sits. So on the, on the left here, we have the, the container. There's uh, so some, um, yeah, just some computers and um, some, some tables where we can sit and operate the telescopes. And now Max is opening the fence. So all our telescopes are surrounded by fans that now uh, yeah, visitor or tourists uh, which uh, come come up the site sometimes can can entering um, the, the telescope area because it would be quite dangerous um, if uh, some person randomly stands uh, near the telescopes and then the telescope is moving. So we have a lot of um, yeah a lot of fences here uh, who protect uh, the telescopes and especially the tourists. Okay, now here we see the FACT telescope. Uh, we hadn't uh, heard about the FACT telescope now. This is a very small telescope compared to this big LST uh, and the big magic telescope. This uh, has just a, a diameter of, uh, I think, 4.5 meters. And this is, uh, was a prototype um, for new camera technology. Um, yeah, and this was a very successful project. Um, yeah, and... Uh, yeah, exactly. So we see here this um, this this white uh, white thing on on the right this is the camera, um, and there's you see this this black uh, coverage. So this is the the ash um, the ash uh, on on the camera. We haven't uh, removed it yet. Uh, yeah. Okay. And yeah, in the in the background you see very nicely this huge um, LST telescope. So I think on the video this um, 
you, you might not see it, but it's really, really big. Okay, so here we see uh, other telescopes on the side. So we have more than 60 um, telescopes in total on this, this Roque de los Muchachos. So this is a very big observatory. And um, we have not just our Cherenkov telescopes here, but also a lot of um, optical telescopes. Um, you see, uh, yeah, I think the uh, you see the Gran... I don't know the name of this telescope. It's, it's a GTC. Grand Telescopio Canarias. Yeah, that is the name. So Max uh, knows all the facts. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, OK. And if you, Max, if you uh, go a bit to the right, then we might see no, the other way around. Go maybe to the right. Then I can show you. So uh, in the back there, so stop. There would be the volcano ash if there would be any volcano um, yeah, uh, activity at the moment, or a volcano activity we see. So then the, the gray clouds come up in, in the right here, so uh, behind this, um, this hill there. OK, so then I think we can go to the magic telescopes. OK, and here we have the magic uh, two telescopes. So this is the second telescope um, that was built uh, and inaugurated in uh, 2009. And yeah, it is uh, quite similar to the LST telescope. So we have, um, again, this, this big uh, mirror dishes um, with a diameter of, uh, of, of 70 meter for the magic telescopes. Mm. And of course, this, this camera bone and the camera um, resting at the tower at the moment. Um, and if you look uh, yeah, very, very closely, you might see that, uh, for example, the um, the mirrors of the magic telescopes are in a, in a squared shape, whereas the uh, mirrors of the LST telescopes, the large size telescope, is um, in a hexagonal shape. So if you ever come here, um, yeah, you can, uh, yeah, you can decide by the by the first look which um, telescope is the LST and which telescopes are the magic telescopes. Okay, so um, yeah, here it is in principle the same. Um, uh, yeah, the same stuff with the um, covering of, of the drive. So we uh, also have to, to cover the, the motors and the drive uh, for the magic telescopes um, to protect them from falling ash. Uh, and now it's uh, shaking a bit, but uh, Max is um, going up the camera tower. And from this point, we will uh, have a great view uh, of the size and on the rack around, you see Max now in the in the mirror. He is uh, a safety first, wearing a helmet um, and so some of these uh, neon neon jackets, so that uh, we are safe here. So we see his reflection in the mirrors, as I said, seventeen meter um, meter in diameter. Okay, and now uh, we he turns around. So this is the camera uh, which is parked at the tower now. Okay, and in the, in the back there, you see the LST telescopes, and there where the, this this uh, reddish uh, roof is, uh, I am sitting under this roof and uh, talking to you right now. Uh, yeah, and here you have the very nice uh, view uh, from the Rocoletas Muchachos. At uh, the most, uh, yeah, most times we are above the clouds, so you see uh, the clouds there, and um, and this is one of the reasons why we are here on on top of uh, of, a, of a mountain or on top of the rocker because we are above the clouds and we have a very uh, great view um, and a very clear sky most of the times. So Max is going down now, and we again see the LST telescopes. Okay, and there's the reflection of the camera in the in the mirrors of Magic Two. And I think we now might go to Magic One. So there's this, this containers everywhere. There's all the electronic stuff. Uh, this uh, shouldn't get wet. So we put them in this big containers. So we left the fence behind. <laughs> also, Magic One and Two are surrounded by fences uh, to protect any visitors uh, from, from just going near there. OK, and so now we are uh, closer to the Magic One telescope. So this is the first telescope that was built. And it uh, yeah, was, uh, I think, finished in 2000, 
four. And uh, now Max uh, is entering the fence of the Magic One telescopes. And these both, or both these telescopes are, yeah, in principle, uh, quite identical. You might see at, if you have a look at the mirrors uh, we see now, that the, the mirrors are a bit, um, yeah, not, not plain, but a bit, uh, yeah, some foreign back. Um, and this is uh, the, the, the major thing where you can um, distinguish between a magic one and, and magic two from the, from the first, from the first side. Yeah, but in principle, the, the camera and all the electronic stuff is um, mostly identical. Um, and we point these telescopes to exactly the same position in the sky. And as uh, Dominic already told us, they are measuring in, in stereo mode. So they are um, yeah, measuring or taking data from these uh, Cherenkov showers from two different positions and from this uh, yeah, two different images. Um, yeah, we can learn a lot about the, the shower and about the particle and the direction where it came from. Okay, so Max is now going back and yeah, we see again the, the LST telescopes um, in the counting house where I'm sitting. This white um, dome that you can, can see there, there we have a LIDAR. This is a, yeah, a laser uh, which we are shooting into the atmosphere and uh, where we can, can measure the, um, the atmosphere and for example, or we, we can measure if there are clouds mainly. This is the main reason why we need it. So we want to know if there are clouds in the sky or clouds covering the source we, we want to see, and we can measure that with this LIDAR um, under this, this big white dome there. Okay, and then I think we are at the end of our tour. If Max hasn't any uh, additional thoughts. And then we would like to show you a very short uh, video or time-lapse uh, Max did yesterday or the day before yesterday and where we can see the LST at night and the stars moving behind it. Okay. So I think, ah, yeah, there we are. So we see here the LST, uh, this is a time lapse. It's about two hours in uh, 20 seconds. And you have this, this bright thing behind the LST. This is the moon going down. Uh, yeah, and we see very nicely the, the sky, the stars moving in the back, uh, some, uh, some, some flashlights where our colleagues uh, went, went there and um, yeah, have some, some flashlights. So, and I think at this point, we are finished with our little tour. Thanks a lot, uh, Lina. Well, I would like to invite all the speakers to join us here. And meanwhile, let me tell you that that time lapse is amazing. And thanks a lot for walking us through the, the observatory. It's nice to see it, even if it is remotely. Hopefully we will come back, a lot of us there soon. So um, I don't see any comments or questions on, on our social media. Uh, I hope it was everything super clear, the science, uh, the understanding why we want to, why we need to observe gamma rays to, to shed sunlight on the origin of cosmic rays. And also I hope it was clear, the projects, uh, MAGIC and CTO and, and the LSD one that we are seeing now with Max uh, there. So uh, let's finish here and let me thank all the audience and Marina who is in the backstage, uh, moving everything, making it run. And that's it. See you in the next event. Uh, we will do magic and CTO together. Thank you. And uh, you. have a good and safe time wherever you are. And have a good and safe time at La Palma. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.